Welcome in this video where we are going to implement the famous paper that introduced GANs in 2014. Uh, so by the end of the video, these are the digits we will generate from the uh, trained model. So you can see they, are, uh, they look very nice and for some of them you cannot distinguish between them on uh, between uh, samples from the training data. Uh, so results are pretty nice. And uh, let me remind you that we will in, uh, only implement the paper that introduced GANs. So we will not be using CNNs, we will only be using MLPs with the uh, hyperparameters from the paper. So let's dive into the code directly. So we'll be using PyTorch uh, to implement our models. Uh, we will uh, use some model libraries such as NumPy or Matplotlib for plotting our uh, generated data. Or we will, we will use Keras, but only for uh, loading the data so that you don't have to download them uh, by yourself. So let's get started. Uh, we can uh, create the um, uh, the function call to train our uh, uh, our generator on our discriminator. Um, so yeah, we just take a generator as input, a discriminator, uh, their optimizers. We take some uh, training data, the number of epochs for which we want to train uh, on a batch size. There is also a parameter k. Um, this is the, uh, I will come to that parameter in a bit. Um, so just, uh, um, just defining, um, um, a variable to uh, log our, our, our loss. So when you train GANs, it's always great to uh, to log the generative and the discriminative loss um, separately so that you can pl plot both on exam um, and have a look at, uh, at both of them. Then we are iterating over the number of epochs, as is common in our iterative algorithm. Um, and then we can start by training the discriminator. So you can see that the first thing you do is you uh, iterate over k uh, that we talked uh, about. So k, uh, usually you want the discriminator to stay um, uh, suboptimal. So usually you will, uh, you will often train the discriminator a bit more than the generator. So k is the number of, ti uh, the number of times you train the discriminator uh, with, um, with respect to the generator. So if k is equal to 5, you, train, uh, you do 5 gradient steps uh, on the discriminator for one gradient step on the generator. Um, so what we do uh, in this loop, we uh, sample a mini batch of noise uh, samples that will be used to uh, feed the generator. We sample a mini batch of M examples from the training data, uh, and then we can compute our loss. So if we, you, you can see that we use the binary cross entropy loss. Uh, let's get back in the paper uh, for a bit and let's have a look at the loss. So you can see that this is the loss we're optimizing. So what we could do, we could just implement this loss as it's written on the uh, on the code, but we will have some issues of numerical instability due to the log uh, to the logarithm function. Uh, so basically, you can just rewrite this um, this loss function as the binary cross entropy loss, where d of x are your positive labels, on d of g of z are your negative labels. So the discriminative score on the fake data. This is your, um, your, your, you can uh, treat that as your uh, negative um, labels. Uh, and then you can just uh, formulate that as the binary course entropy loss that will be more stable because PyTorch will handle uh, the logarithm on everything um, related to, uh, to numerical instabilities. So let's do that so we don't have to handle that and we won't have uh, exploding gradients, for example. So I, I have the fake loss, so the loss uh, related to the fake data. I have the loss related to the real data, and then I take the average of both of, of both loss. Um, taking the average is not uh, not necessary. You don't have to divide by two. Uh, yeah, doing it or, or not does not change uh, much. Uh, and then up updating the parameters of the discriminator on logging the loss. So that's for the discriminator. Let's move on to the generator. So for the generator, we don't need to sample real data. We only need to sample some noise so that we can feed them to the generator to sample fake data, and we can feed them to the discriminator to get a score for them. Uh, and again, we will use the binary course entropy loss for numerical stability. Then we can update the parameters of the generator and log the loss directly. And you can see that's super simple. In about um, 40, 30 or 40 lines of code, we've implemented the GAN algorithm to train our generator on discriminator. So that's super easy. Um, we'll see in uh, upcoming videos, uh, more complex, uh, more complex uh, losses, more complex uh, training uh, loops. But for now, this is really the basic, um, the basic uh, loop 
and you can see that it's already able to generate pretty nice results. So now let's move on to implementing our models. So for example, the generator, but it won't be so complicated as it's just a MLP. So we are implementing the generator, which is a subclass of nn.module. Uh, its input dimension is 100. This is the hyperparameter from the paper. The hidden dimension is uh, 100, uh, 1200. And the output dimension is an image of 28 by 28 pixels. But uh, as we are using MLPs, we, are only, um, we output a 1D vector of uh, 784 uh, pixel values. Um, and you can see for the hidden dimensions, we use the ReLU activation function. And for the uh, final uh, layer, we use tangent hyperbolic so that the generated pixel would be uh, constrained between minus one and one. Then we can move on to the discriminator that will be our uh, MLP as well. So now the discriminator is taking as input an image of size 28 by 28, so 784 pixels. The hidden dimension is a bit lower than for the generator. And the output dimension is one because we're outputting a single value, the score for the, uh, for the given image. Um, for hidden activation function, we use the leaky ReLU. And for the uh, output activation function, we use the sigmoid uh, because uh, it will constrain the, um, the probability, the, the output probability to be between zero and one. Um, on the offici official um, paper, they use the max out activation function for the hidden layers of the discriminator, but, um, but it is not implemented within PyTorch, so I used leaky ReLU instead. But, but uh, ReLU and leaky ReLU are just um, uh, address a, a specific case of the uh, max out, so it's not a big deal, and it gives great results. Uh, we needed two helpers in our, our training loop, so we need a function to sample noise and a function to sample a uh, mini batch. So let's move on to implementing the get min batch function. So what we'll do, we'll sample pointers um, in the training data, and then we'll just return uh, the uh, training uh, data points at those uh, sampled uh, pointers. Uh, we will uh, convert them from the Py arrays to PyTorch tensors, uh, and we will reshape them to a 1D vector. Then we can create a function to sample noise. So we'll sample data from the uh, from an isotropic Gaussian distribution, so with a mean of zero, on the standard deviation of one. We could uh, rewrite that more compactly by using the runs end function of PyTorch, but anyway, the, uh, this works as well. Now that we have all our pieces, we can just put them together. So um, let's create our main function. So by default, we'll train on a GPU, which will be much faster, obviously. Then we can use the load data function from Keras to load the MNIST data set. And basically, we are doing unsupervised learning, so we don't need uh, labels. Uh, and we will normalize our data to be between minus one and one. And this will be uh, uh, this will uh, uh, this will match well with the uh, activation function we use for the generator. So the generator will uh, generate data between minus and one, and we are making sure that our data are normalized accordingly. Then we can create our neural network, so the discriminator, the generator, and the optimizers. So they use momentum in the uh, original paper, so we'll do the same. And now that we have everything, we can just uh, um, start the training loop. So we are uh, feeding our generator, discriminator, our optimizers. We are training for 50,000 epochs, and we are using a batch size of 100. And I did not touch the default uh, k parameter, so by default we are using k equal 1. And then when, it, what, when it's done, once our generator and discriminators are trained, uh, basically we no longer need the discriminator, and we can just use the generator to generate images. So we are uh, generating 25 images, uh, we are sampling some noise, feeding the noise to the generator, and this gives us images. And you should get the results, um, similar results to the one I showed in the, um, in the beginning of this video. Uh, there is also in the description a, a link to the GitHub for this code, um, with also the uh, appropriate requirements to make sure you get the same results um, as the one I showed. Uh, I, really, uh, I really hope that you liked this video, that it was helpful to you. Um, if it was, please leave the thumbs up, it really helps uh, other people to discover this channel. Uh, and if you liked uh, this content, uh, please uh, subscribe uh, so that you will see uh, more content like that. Thank you.